Simulink is a graphical programming environment that's built into MATLAB. It's primarily used for modeling, simulating, and analyzing dynamic systems. Its interface is a graphical block diagramming tool and it offers a customizable set of block libraries. It's directly integrated with the basic MATLAB environment and can either drive MATLAB or be scripted from it. In order to truly appreciate the capabilities of Simulink, we need to fully understand what a dynamic system is. Because dynamic systems come in many different forms, we need a broad definition for what a dynamic system is. At a fundamental level, a dynamic system is an input-output relationship wherein the present output is a function of both present and past inputs. Take, for example, the action of riding a bicycle. You turn the crank to produce a torque, which subsequently produces forward thrust. This is the input to the system, which we can call u of t. The output, on the other hand, is the resulting forward velocity that you get by turning the cranks. We'll call this v of t. Mathematically, we can write the velocity function for v of t, and we know that intuitively the present velocity at time t is a function of whether or not we are pedaling at time t. In other words, the present velocity is of course a function of the present input u of t. However, we also know that we might have some residual velocity left over from pedaling some time ago. In other words, the present velocity might also be a function of past inputs. This dependency of the output on present and past inputs is what makes this a dynamic system. On the other hand, the present output of a static system is only dependent on the present input. A resistor, for example, is governed by Ohm's law which states that the voltage drop across the resistor is equal to the product of the current flowing through it and the resistance, R. Considering the applied voltage to be the input and the resulting current, I of t, to be the output, the equation can be written in the following way. What we observe here is that the present output, which is the current at time t, is only a function of the present input applied, which is the voltage at time t. In other words, no previously applied voltage has any effect on the present output. For this reason, we consider this to be a static system. Let's return to another dynamic system, an automobile. You can depress the gas pedal and the net effect is a forward thrust on the vehicle. This is the input, u of t. The resulting forward velocity is the output, v of t. Now suppose you're in your vehicle at rest and then you apply the following input. What does the output velocity look like? Does it follow the same shape as the input? Of course not. Instead, the output increases from zero, quite rapidly at first, and then starts to taper off as the aerodynamic drag force becomes larger and larger as you go faster and faster. Then at some point, aerodynamic drag gets large enough to cancel out the forward thrust provided by the engine, and we hit what's referred to as the terminal velocity. To some degree, you probably knew this already. In other words, you had some intuition for the dynamic behavior of this system. However, if you want to run Simulink simulations of this system, your intuition just won't be good enough. Simulink requires a mathematical description of the dynamic system in order to perform any meaningful simulations. So the question is, can we somehow capture the dynamics of this system in a mathematical way? Well, it turns out the answer is yes, and the process of mathematically describing a dynamic system is called modeling, which we'll review in the next video.